Hi everybody and welcome to the flute practice. My name is Tatiana and today we are going to be looking at the do's and don'ts of flute articulation. That's right. We are going to be checking out this guy a little bit more. If this is your first time at my channel, I encourage you to subscribe down below and hit that gray notification button so that you can get notifications when my new videos come out. Let's right into it. One of the first things that you want to check with your articulation is where you are articulating. You don't want to be articulating between the teeth. You don't want to be articulating anywhere that's touching the teeth or even the lips, although there is such thing as French tonguing where we start between the lips. So if we're starting and we start with the tongue just between the lips, I'm going to demonstrate that in a moment for you guys. But the point is you don't want to be tonguing anywhere else. You do want to be tonguing on the top, kind of just behind the teeth, on the kind of bony, fleshy ridge just behind the teeth. The first beginning of the palate, basically, that is where you do want to be articulating. For most people, this is the natural place where you'll say two, 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 or do, 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 do. But for some people, you might realize you are saying your tes and your does between the teeth or touching your teeth or somewhere else. In which case, you want to just train this quite carefully. A nice little exercise to do for this is to touch the top of your palate with your tongue, not in the correct spot. It's also the spot where you say N or L. So if you say like, like my videos, then you will also feel where that is happening. So get the tongue there, let it rest there. Uh, I can see what I'm doing, probably not, but <laughs> just up there. Let it rest there. And all you're then going to do is let the air move the tongue down and forward. So and that's really the movement of it. It's that simple. It shouldn't be more complicated or complex than that. I think so often we think as tonguing as like starting or creating a note with the tongue, but actually the tonguing is just articulating the airstream that's existing already. Yes, sometimes we are going to play short notes, so we are going to stop the air in between, but for the most part, we really want the air to be consistent and the tongue to kind of just articulate it. And this kind of brings me straight to my next point, which is don't neglect good support and breathing and airflow when you are articulating. This is particularly important when you are kind of playing double tonguing passages, those crazy kind of runs. And so often we get so stuck on the tongue and what's going on here and the fingers that we just forget the basic kind of just sound. Let your sound be beautiful, be its usual beautiful self. So what I want you to imagine is I want you to imagine that there is kind of like a wave of air and that your tongue is just articulating that wave of air rather than kind of your tongue is every single time chopping up the wave of air. So let that air flow. Another really important aspect of tonguing is looking at how much of the tongue you're actually using. I am going to put a little diagram right up there for you guys to have a look at. And you can see the tongue is a lot bigger than most of us think. It's actually a pretty big muscle. And we kind of tend to think of the tongue as like, you know, just this part that we kind of see. But it's this gigantic, massive, really cool muscle that can do all kinds of weird and wonderful things. And we have to really learn to not use the entire muscle. I mean, we are not anyway, but like not use so much of it. We tend to kind of tongue so much that we can kind of see this part moving. I don't know if I can demonstrate it. But if you watch yourself or film yourself and you can see this part of your face really moving excessively, you're probably using too much of your tongue. A really nice little exercise to train ourselves to just really use the little tip part. I'm going to put that diagram up there again so you can see we just really want to use that tip is to bite down on the sides of your tongue. So you can say a word like e or eat, e, and in the e you're going to get your tongue there. It's going to bite down. Uh huh. And then, okay, I can't speak like that. Then you're just going to 
do the test very very gently you are going to feel in the beginning your tongue is going to want to kind of slip out from between your teeth there and this is normal in the beginning it's quite tricky i remember really struggling with this and thinking well obviously i just can't do this and like my tongue isn't made for this or my tongue's a weird shape or something which it, it might be but possibly it's just a bit of training it's a great activity you can do like on the bus or wherever you are you just sit there with your tongue like this relax your face and then applying all the other things we just spoke about so applying the correct position in the mouth where you are actually tapping the tongue letting the air flow getting the breathing going beautifully all of those things a very common thing that we often see is that people either breathe between each note or they kind of like move the whole embouchure when they're tonguing and this can really get in our way of articulating properly and it can also really get in the way of kind of getting in the way of our sound and making a good sound so sometimes people will kind of like either breathe between each note and that's especially for people that are very new beginners or for more professional players you will often see especially in notes that are kind of separated like that often moving the whole embouchure and you can really see why that will be and is so disruptive for our playing so really what we want to do is we want to imagine once again it's on that wave of air and yes the air is stopping in between but with the support and the direction and the line is staying so and then you can start really creating beautiful musical lines with this playing which is so cool and so exciting the last little kind of don't is don't get stuck on one type of articulation there is not just like the one articulation like oh i know how to tongue now i've got this sorted for life there are so many different ways that we should can and do tongue actually but we really need to practice this as well so for example and i mentioned already you've got the french tonguing where you're really starting between the teeth there you can tongue with kind of more accent or a little bit more precision You can tongue with more force, you can tongue more piano and gentle. And the way that you're going to achieve these different types of tonguing is basically if you're going to tongue with more force, a little bit more kind of precision, you tongue more forward, you get more of the t sound. Whereas if you're going to tongue more gently, you get more of the d sound, your tongue is going to be a little bit more gentle. And I, I want, I, I'm like, don't want to say more and less air because the tendency is to kind of like, uh, once again stop that air I think it's just really about how you control that air if that makes any sense without sounding completely and absolutely vague I really like to think of articulation kind of as like your paint brushes if you imagine the tone colors and your tone is like your paints and the, the articulation are like your paint brushes or your little those like little chisely things or sponges or whatever you have for your art and we need to make sure we have got good equipment and that we're really using beautiful, lovely brushes. I am a, not, not a great artist, but I do love to paint. And I recently went out and I bought myself watercolors. Great, you know, and a whole bunch of really cheap brushes. And I can tell you, I really struggled to do, oh, you know, I'd watch those tutorials and I'd be like, whoa, that's amazing. And then I'd do it myself and I'm like, wow, this is not amazing. And then I went and bought myself proper brushes, like, good well not like the best quality but decent quality guys the difference is ridiculous and the same goes for your articulation you want to make sure you're using good equipment otherwise you are going to get you know really lovely colors but without any real like skill and um, definition it's just going to be a kind of yeah a painting mess like mine was but the point is I want you guys to explore and play around with different tonguing. Don't just get stuck on the one type of tonguing. For all my patrons, we are going to be doing a Patreon only video this week where we are going to look at all these different types of tonguings and ways of tonguing. And we're going to use technical exercises and kind of guide you through a process of ideas of how to practice this and what to practice.
For any of you who would like to get onto the Patreon system, I'm going to put a link down below. You can go check this out. This is just really a cool space where I get to just connect more deeply with all of you, where we get to take the knowledge and the kind of um, learning to the next level. And I really get to interact with you guys on a very different level. So if you would like to become a part of the Patreon family, go check it out. There are some really cool rewards, including online lessons and consultations. Until then, everybody, happy practicing and see you next time.